Okay, how are we looking? And it's like locked into my face, so I think we're good. I've got my notes right here, and we've got some things to talk about, so buckle up. <laughs> Madison and welcome to my knitting podcast. This is episode five and it's been a while since uh, we caught up with each other. So I'm excited to talk about things. Happy New Year. It's January. Today is January 10th um, and I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday season and is getting into the swing of things. For me, this last December kind of felt a little off. I don't know. Things weren't feeling as festive as they usually do. I couldn't really pinpoint what was exactly off about things, but um, holidays come and go <laughs> just like they do. And I got to spend a few weeks back in the Midwest with my family, which was very nice. And most of my family knits, so it was a lot of time spent on the couch together, knitting. Um, I helped my mom organize her yarn stash, which was very fun for me. Hopefully things are looking a little clearer here. I did do a bit of a phone upgrade in the past month, which was very exciting for me personally. I've, I was really holding on to my old went to my old iPhone and I was like, you know what? I think it's time to do a little bit of an upgrade. I'm back in New York, back in my apartment. I've rearranged my apartment since we last talked. And so I'm trying out this new setting. I've got my little fireplace, which, you know, it's so funny. New York apartments are so, especially like pre-war ones are so quirky, I feel like, because I'm like this, I don't know what the deal is with this. It's not a working fireplace. <laughs> and I think they like painted over the tile. I don't know. The memes about uh, landlords coming into apartments and just like white paint over literally everything like doorknobs, nails, hinges, windows, like <laughs> that is real. There, I do have some nails that have been like painted into the wall um, throughout my apartment. But anyway, happy to be home, happy to be reunited with all of my yarn and my spinning wheel. I've been really loving getting back into spinning and I have some spinning stuff that I wanna talk about, but I'll save that for the end in case you are here just for the knitting, which is totally okay. Um, but why don't we just get into things? I've got a few FOs, some things to talk about. I've got quite a few whips. I have a lot of things on the needles right now, and I'll talk about that more when we get to that little segment and kind of get into my plans for this year and where things are going <laughs> with my hobby. <laughs> um, and I do have I have one acquisition, which I am excited about, but also I was, I've was i been trying really hard not to buy anything, um, but alas, there was one, <laughs> one shop update I could not resist. And spoiler alert, it is Nujadin. <laughs> first FO, I've got a bunch of socks, which actually I wanna talk about these first. I believe I showed these in my last episode, um, but it is, my what i'm calling my perfect fit socks so to recap <laughs> these socks which i'll hold up both of them i've worn them a little bit so hopefully they're not too dirty looking um this is so nice that i have like a little autofocus now i feel really professional um i took knitting natty's perfect fit socks course which is an online um kind of self-guided course um she has a bunch of video modules that you go through and it really 
is like a deep dive into sock construction and measurements and how to make sure that socks fit your feet. Um, and it has been so helpful. I have so much more confidence now in playing around with stitch counts and different like heel constructions and um, increasing and decreasing throughout the different sections of a sock, which has been really fun. I've have I have three finished socks, so that's <laughs> this like course definitely spurred me on into a bit of a sock knitting frenzy. Um, and I have more plans for socks this year. So this is the pair that I made going through the course with the video modules. The yarn is some old cat sandwich um, sock yarn that I picked up at Nitty City before COVID. Um, and for a while I was worried, I hadn't seen anything from cat sandwich, so I was worried that she was done dying but she actually reopened her shop i think a few months ago and i was super stoked um and she just has a lot of fun it's you know lots of like pinks and fun colors <laughs> um but yeah this is just kind of a vanilla sock with the fish lips kiss heel um a normal toe uh, I have two different cuffs going here. I was playing with um, stitch counts and just which ribbing I preferred. So I started with just a one by one rib and then on my second sock I tried out a two by two and these fit pretty good. I think the heel there's still a little bit of extra space so I've got some things to work on and kind of finesse. Um, as I continue on my sock knitting journey. I'm trying to make this feel more natural. Um, so, trying to... <laughs> How cute, have I shown you my cat person mug? It literally says cat person. I don't wanna spill it, but it says cat person. All these cute little cats. It's funny when people are like, I'm a dog person, I'm a cat person. I just like love animals. Cats are the easiest thing to have in a small New York City apartment. So that is why I've got two little kitties with me. Um, someday I want dogs and sheep, maybe goats, horses. I, my dream, I was such a horse girl growing up. I would love to have a like horse sanctuary for you know, rescue horses. <laughs> so not sure why, you know, not sure what I'm doing in New York City, but none of those things are conducive to apartment life or city life. Anyway, back to the knitting. I'm obsessed with Woolens and Nosh, their Targi sock base. It is my new favorite thing. And I've got another skein I have a sock set from them that I've been meaning to knit up, um, but I've got two socks finished, which, I mean, there's a caveat for this pair uh, because I am going to rip it out <laughs> and redo it because they are too big. So I started this, uh, and this is the Earth Tones Girl colorway. It's her collab with them, and she is about to do another shop update, I believe. It's a pre-order. so. I mean, these colors are gorgeous. I would recommend getting on it. I picked these up at Rhinebeck this last October. Only got the single, like the full skein. I did not get the sock set. Oh, they're just so pretty. Oh my gosh. Um, so I grabbed a random mini from my stash. This is a Surella yarn. Um, mini that I also picked up at Rhinebeck but finished these tried them on and they're like okay but they're definitely big and are going to get bigger I think you know socks kind of stretch out as you wear them so I was really sad about that <laughs> once I came to that realization 
that I was just like, I'm never going to wear these in their current state, so I might as well rip them out and redo them because it's just more knitting time, which is, you know, all I could ever want. And what I'm planning on doing is turning them into a DRK everyday sock, which this is the craziest looking sock tube. I should have put these on, <laughs> should have put these on my sock blockers, but uh, these this is also Woolen's and Nosh. I'm like, maybe get the colors in. The colors are so fun. This was the Advent sock for this last year. And this one I got halfway through knitting it pretty much exactly like this one, um, top down, just a vanilla sock. And realized it was also going to be too big and was like, you know what? We're stopping here, we're ripping it out, and we're gonna reevaluate. So I did some math. Math that I learned from Knitting Natty's Perfect Fit Sock course definitely helped me kind of calculate where my stitch counts should be because using these socks as a gauge swatch, the Targi sock base is definitely thicker than a like merino nylon sock base, which is something that I love about it, but I was following stitch counts as if I was using a merino nylon sock yarn, which this is not. So after doing some math and realizing that my stitch count needed to go pretty drastically down like compared to what I was using before, I picked a size of the DRK Everyday Socks that was pretty close to kind of like the stitch count that I had in my head of where I should be with the space. And I love the fit of these. I have made the Bear Paw Socks, which those turned out too big. I gave them to my boyfriend sad for me. I need to make another pair for myself that actually fits. Um, and I had yet to do the DRK every day, which they are basically the same pattern, just different weights of yarn. Um, and they go so fast. So I think I'm definitely, um, I just love these colors. And I loved that. So Michelle of Wollens and Nosh had the advent yarns um already skeined up and like in a little bag so you couldn't see the colors is all a mystery and you've got the divider it came with a mini skein too so you knew this color um the purple which is like so pretty um and then each color is divided by the purple as well so you would knit the stripe for the day, or this is what I did at first before I ripped it out and then <laughs> restarted. And then I was like way off of the advent schedule. So I just didn't even pay attention. So when I started, I was knitting a color a day and then, you know, you're pulling it out of the bag. So you don't know what color is coming up. And then once you got to the, you've got like a row and a half kind of, of the divider purple color. So once I reached that, um, I would stop and then finish, you know, then do, the next day do a stripe. So then each day it was a surprise on what the color was gonna be, which was so fun. I love these socks. <laughs> they do look crazy. It's got the um, Flegal heel, which, um, I like, I feel, I mean, the same with the Fish Lips Kiss heel in that you don't have to pick up any stitches, which I don't enjoy doing. And um, at first I was kind of, you know, didn't know if I loved the look of it because you just kind of get this little saddle on the back. Um, but I have since come around to it and I am really loving this pattern. And I think I'm going to, I can't remember if I said this already, but I'm going to rip these out and do what I did for these. So these will eventually become a DRK everyday sock as soon as I find the emotional, emotional strength to rip out my knitting. I've gotten better about ripping out knitting 
um, especially over this last year and frogging things if I'm just know that it's not gonna be a wearable finished object for me I definitely you know I love the process of knitting but I also you also want something that ends up that you can use and wear so that is all of my socks for now am I talking faster today for some reason I don't know it's probably because I've only had coffee and I've yet to eat lunch so we're in that kind of in-between time where I have more coffee <laughs> than food in me so I'm like on I feel like the Energizer Bunny right now my last finished object for today is my Felix pullover by Savory Knitting aka Amy Christoffers I hear her last name as Christopher's and Christoffers so I'm not sure which is correct but Savory Knitting um, and oh uh, I'm like, I think the green looks better when it's back here, maybe. I don't know, but it's got this pretty, it's just, you know, top-down raglan, got a pretty lace detail um, along the increases, and it's just stocking it for days. It was so quick and so nice. <laughs> so nice of a knit. I used Green Mountain Spinnery Weekend Wool, which is kind of like a heavy worsted borderline Aran weight yarn. I used the recommended needle size and I only had five skeins, I think. And I did the, I think I did the smallest size. I was kind of like, could have gone in between sizes, but based on the yardage that I had, I was like, I'm definitely gonna go for the smaller size and just make sure that I can <laughs> get a sweater out of what I had, because I think I had only 700 yards, maybe. There's details in my Ravelry project page. Um, if you'd like to check that out, I will link it below. It's definitely cropped. You know, I could have done with one more skein of yarn to make it a little bit longer, um, but it's long enough where you know, it goes with my high-waisted jeans and pants. I've been enjoying wearing this over just a simple, like, thin turtleneck long sleeve um, as, like, an extra layer. It's super cozy and warm. It's nice and thick, um, but not, like, you know, not super bulky thick. Like, I can wear a coat over, no issue. I wore this so much. Um, over my holiday break when I was visiting family and um, basically just took this and like another sweater and <laughs> wore this most of the time. So I would definitely make another one. I think I'm really interested in doing the Felix cardigan version. Looks really pretty. I apologize for any construction background noise. It's been driving me insane all week, <laughs> and I was hoping that they would stay. I thought they were on their lunch break, but it seems they have returned. Um, so hopefully it's not too distracting. I really did try to not have that in the background, but it is New York City. Now for the fun stuff, my work's in progress. I have continued my cast on craziness that started in the fall and have just kind of been casting things on that I feel like will bring me joy. I don't know if anyone else has really felt the effects of seasonal depression, but the past few months have been a little tough for me so I'm like anything especially for my hobby that is like the most fun thing for me to do anything within it that brings me extra joy I'm here for it and I'm doing it anyway my <laughs> works in progress I have I'll start with my I'll start like little to big how about that um this one was my Christmas Day cast on and 
I haven't really touched it since I got back um, from visiting my family, but I am still really excited about it and plan to finish it hopefully soon. So it is another sock and I've got, ooh, what is that? Um, I've got, I'm on the foot now, which is exciting. It's got kind of a long leg. I did like an extra long cuff because I wanted that hot pink pop of color. And then um, it's got like lighter pink and green and we're using the pink again. So the pattern is the slip, slip ribbed socks by Summer Lee Knits. Um, she has great patterns. Nothing more to say about that. Love, love her sock patterns so much. And I did substitute a fish lips kiss heel in here. Um, so we'll see. And I adjusted it slightly from what I did for my perfect fit sock. So trying to experiment and see if that will fit better. Um, and yeah, but I'm kind of like, Am I turning into a toe up only person? I don't know. It's just so nice to do toe up socks. I was really scared of them for a long time and now I'm really into them. But these are my yarns that I am loving so much. I bought these two at Rhinebeck. They're both Earl Grey fiber. Um, the details, again, will be in my Ravelry page because I'm trying to remember. I can't remember if they're the same sock base or different sock bases. I know one, if not both, are the gunpowder socks. Um, that's one of their bases. This hot pink is Plucky Knitter, and I will put the you know, sock base details in my Ravelry project page because uh, they also have a few different sock bases, but I have really gotten into Plucky Knitter. Their sock base that is, oh, it's escaping my mind now. Um, but it's their Merino Cashmere Nylon Blend is so amazing. I think it's it's like top three sock bases. It's that and the Wall and Zinosh are the only, if I had to pick sock yarns to take to a desert island, those two would be in the running for sure. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of letting this rest for now. I've got my sights set on a few other projects, but it's always nice to have socks to come back to. And um, I really love having socks on the needles um, because I can also just stuff them in my tote bag whenever I'm going somewhere. I don't always knit on the subway or when I'm in transit, sometimes there's too many people and it's a lot of like trying to find elbow space. Um, but I do love having <laughs> a little something with me at all times, just in case I do end up having to wait somewhere or whatnot. And socks are like perfect for those little grab and go projects. Next up is the old twist and turns <laughs> by Stephen West, the MCAL from last year. Um, I finished Clue 1, when was that, in November maybe, um, or maybe it was October. I was had a big push on it for a while, finished Clue 1, and then kind of was like, I think I need a little bit of a break, that was really intense, put that down, let it rest, um, worked on some other things, and then when I was packing for... Uh, my holiday travels, <laughs> I was like, okay, I think my main project that I'm going to focus on, I had almost two weeks away. So like my main project that I want to work on is my MCAL. And I would love to get that done before the end of the year. That was like my big goal. I was like, I've got, you know, a week off of work. I can finish it up in a week, right? No, I was, <laughs> I was very wrong. Um, but I did make good progress, so I'm happy with that. So here, this is clue one, um, just for a reminder. And then I did 
Uh, I'm almost done with clue two. I've got like three rows left uh, of clue two. And then, and then it's gonna go for another rest. <laughs> so it might be until next October when I finish. <laughs> When I finish, just in time for the next MCAL, which is very TBD if I will participate in. Um, but anyway, clue two was much easier knitting wise. You know, you had these panels that go out and then you picked up these stitches and did the pretty cables on the bottom. Um, so you do it on one side and then this is where I'm still, I've got a few a few rows left, but almost there. And yeah, the this side is it's all garter, but since it's on the other side, it's a lot of purling. I don't know that any other knitting project has put me through such an emotional roller coaster as this one has, and I'm not even done with it. What's been keeping me going is reminding myself that this is a process knit, and I'm you know trying to stay open to new construction, new techniques, new everything. So, and it's been a lot of new, and this is also new yarn to me. The um, the yarn is a kit from Stephen and Penelope, but it's a Danish dyer, uh, Sislergit is how I've been saying it. Um, again, details on my Ravelry page. It's their Merino singles, so, super soft and you know i haven't worked with a singles yarn in quite some time i usually don't go for singles um but i've been loving this and it's definitely like a soft like it's gonna be soft and squishy when it's done what has been throwing me for a loop is that i don't <laughs> like how it looks I mean, I like the colors and I think, you know, now that I'm looking at it on the camera, I'm like, it looks good. Um, I like the colors and the yarn, the, I mean, just, I'm not going to wear something that has these crazy braids on it <laughs> and I don't really like stripes. <laughs> um, so it's just, you know, it's different. It's getting me out of my comfort zone. If it ends up being, you know, just a cozy wrap that I wear around the house, that's great. If it becomes a blanket that I keep on the couch, also great. If I give it to my cats, <laughs> just kidding. It's too nice to give to my cats. Um, they've got plenty of their own stuff. When I was home for the holidays and working on it like a lot spending a lot of the day just knitting on this one thing i'd get to a point where i was like what am i doing is this a waste of yarn like should i just rip it all out and use the yarn for something different that i'm actually gonna like wear or like so every time that i got to that point i would just be like, okay this is a sign that i need a break i'm gonna put the shawl down and work on something else and then when I'm back in the headspace of like, I'm ready to learn new things, get out of my comfort zone, that's when I will get back to the shawl. So, um, it's, yeah, I'm gonna finish clue two and then probably put it down for a little bit and work on some other projects. But it's been, it's been a ride, <laughs> is what I will say about that. I... Yeah, I don't know that um, another MCAL is in my future. I love the idea of like the mystery and like so many people get so into it and it's such a fun, you know, journey to see throughout the month of him releasing the clues, but maybe I'll just watch from afar next time and you know, watch people's podcasts of them doing the MCAL and that can be what satiates that desire to participate. <laughs> My last whip is something that I just casted on this last week. I am 
excited about it. Last year I did a lot of top down circular yoke, you know, in the round knitting. So, and then when I was thinking about what new projects I wanted to do this year, I think a cardigan is a big one, um, just different constructions. And, you know, I don't need a million circular yoke sweaters. I can try other things. <laughs> and that is what led me to doing this crazy, crazy one. Um, so yeah, I've just started. So I've only got a few of the repeats in, but this is going to be a big cozy cardi by Miss Andrea Mowry. And Farmer's Daughter Fiber is doing a little knit along for it right now, but I am not really, we'll see. I'm not confident that I will be able to finish within the time frame, although it seems pretty generous. It's in, I think it ends in mid-March, early March maybe, but I, um, yeah, so right now it's like, <laughs> It's so long, you cast on all these stitches, which was crazy uh, to do, but we did it and we're moving right along. And I even swatched for this, so bonus points to me. I wanted to make sure that I swatched for this because I'm using the Sock Hill Farm Sport, uh, sport Weight yarn. And this is, uh, I don't know that it's all of their wool. I think they might have um, used some other American wool. Uh, so it's not all from their farm specifically, but they, um, and I'm not sure who milled it actually. I would, I would like to know. <laughs> um, but it is just a nice kind of undyed gray. I had a sweaters quantity of this Sock Hill Farm yarn that I picked up at Rhinebeck. I was going to use it for a different sweater, decided that I wasn't really feeling that sweater anymore, um, and then was just looking for sport weight sweaters. And obviously I had seen the Big Cozy Cardi when Andrea released it um, not too long ago. I think it was just released last fall. and. When it first came out, I was like, oh, you know, it does look cozy, but I don't know if I would want to make that. And then the more I looked at it, I was like, you know what? Let's just give it a go. I've got all the things. I have a whole bunch of Surrey from, um, <laughs> that I bought off of my sister. Um, this is a Woolberry. I think it's their Berry Surrey. Uh, the color, this colorway is Travel and Hope. So it's kind of like this grayish purple. Um, and one thing that I wanted to keep in mind for this year is trying to do uh, a few more neutral colored projects because last year, um, I mean, I love color, but I, last year I had, I just felt like I ended the year with a bunch of yarn that was like random color bits. And in my projects too, it was a lot of like blues and browns and, and color work, which I love knitting color work, but I was like, maybe this year I need to do some more like single color projects. So I was like, you know what? These would make a great cozy and neutral cardigan. So that's what we're doing. They uh, calculated that I will have to knit, so this is like a, a four row repeat for the body. I've calculated that if I knit two repeats a day for 15 or 16 days, then I will have that step. <laughs> then I will have that step of the pattern done. Cause I think that was also a big deterrent of like, oh, this is a lot of, a lot of knitting. And testers, I checked out the Ravelry projects 
And I noticed that testers did say that it's like quite a bit of knitting. Like don't try to do this in a weekend. But we're embracing slow knitting and taking our time, enjoying things. I don't, you know, don't need to rush through my hobby <laughs> for any reason. I also wanted to mention that my kohlrabi pullover that I'm doing in Newtonden, the pattern is by Savory Knitting. It is still a work in progress. I just have not touched it since I left for the holidays, which has was now three weeks ago. So that is just sitting in its project bag waiting to be worked on. So I'm not going to show it. But um, I just wanted to say it has not been forgotten. <laughs> I'm still very much loving that sweater and loving the pattern. I'm almost done with the color work on the yoke and then I think the rest will just be easy breezy. So that's all of the whips that I've been focused on recently and I did want to talk quickly about some acquisitions. I am in the middle of trying to do a 100 day stash down challenge. This is with uh, the Jillian Moreno Patreon. She is the spinning queen. I've been loving her Patreon. She started this 100 day stash down challenge within her Patreon at the beginning of December and it's very hand spun, hand spinning, you know, working through your fiber stash focused. I, as a new hand spinner, <laughs> my fiber stash is pretty small, although I do have quite a few things that I need to work through because I went a little crazy around Black Friday sales and stuff. Um, but I wanted to do a stash down challenge, but also kind of incorporate my knitting and my yarn in it and i think right now i mean it's been going well i did make one purchase which i'm going to show you um and there are a bunch of whole caveats that jillian kind of has for her patreon um so i get one fiber club a month um that i was already subscribed to so i didn't cancel that that doesn't really count as a new purchase for me and i also had already previously subscribed to uh, La Mercerie, which is a yarn shop out in Washington State, right? I believe. Pacific Northwest, somewhere. Um, I had subscribed to their Year of Socks, which I just thought was a really cool yarn subscription because every month is a new sock set from a new indie dyer. That is a good segue into the sock set that I got for January, which I would like to show off. Also, my sister got me this little bag uh, for Christmas, along with some fiber, and this is just like the perfect little project size. This month's sock set, I've got it caked up already, is from the Yarn Addict Co. Um, who is a lovely hand dyer. This, I believe, is called Coastal, and I think it's exclusive to La Mercerie, like through the Year of Socks program. But I've got that caked up because I am prepping to cast these on. I think I'm gonna make them into a DRK everyday sock because I have found that fit to be amazing. Um, I think that is what will get the most wear from me. Um, <laughs> and my goal this year is to knit a pair of socks every month and use the monthly year of socks subscription um, to do that. So I don't know. I had an idea of like, oh, maybe I just do the DRK everyday sock every month, um, but that could change. I just, you know, I don't know about the vanilla socks <laughs> fitting. I, I'm like, I try to make them as tight as I can, but 
I really like having the ribbing, I think. Anyway, I'll leave you with those thoughts. I did make another purchase from New to Den. They had a Patreon only shop update for the holidays. Um, and I was trying really hard to resist, but then I couldn't. So I wanna show you what I've got. Um, I've got two, I got two colors of yarn and then I purchased some fiber, which is a first uh, for me from New to Den. I think, I'm not sure how long they've been selling fiber for spinning, but they were selling carded bats of fiber and I have been spinning primarily from uh, like comb top. So I thought getting a few bats would be a nice way to practice uh, you know, spinning something different. So first the yarn, which is also kind of just fiber because it's unspun, but this is, and uh, uh, what are the names? I'll hold up the bag so you can see the name. I don't speak Swedish, so I'm not sure what the correct pronunciation is there, but it is a beautiful, um, orange and yellow and I think Caroline kind of described this as like sunshine like light light rays um, and I think it's kind of hard to tell in this lighting but there are you know different shades it's you've got some like light yellow here and then it goes to like orange um, and all kind of like blends together so that is really beautiful and I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet. The other colorway that I got is, can you read that? Hopefully. Um, this gorgeous, gorgeous deep purple, um, like reddish purple. It is so pretty. So, Love that. It feels so soft. I also don't know what I'm going to move up in. I think, I don't know. I have a lot of knitted in knitting plans that I, I really need to sit down and like kind of plan some things out because now I've acquired quite a bit of a knitted in stash that I would like to work through before I purchase any more knitted in. Um, but I have found working with Newton to be so lovely. And I think, you know, it has a bit of a cult following, but the Newton community is so creative and inspiring. And I have just been loving everything about it. So this is the bag that I got of head, head for scale um, of fiber. So I'm just gonna leave it down here. It's just, um, I don't know. This was like more fiber, I think, than I was expecting in terms of like bat size. Cause like, I don't know. I think I was just expecting like a little, a little thing, but it might also just be because it's a bat and it's like extra fluffy um, and gorgeous. So I got one in this color, which is kind of, it's kind of like it. Um, <laughs> so I got one in, so I got two different colors of bats. The first one is this one, which in some lights it looks gray, Sometimes some lights it looks slightly blue, um, but is really, really pretty, really soft. It's all 100% Swedish wool. And then I've also got this one. Ah, oh, so pretty. It's kind of like giving ballet pink vibes. Um, it just looks so soft and pretty. So I'm super excited to have some bats to work with for spinning. I've been doing some kind of one-off smaller spinning things and practice. Um, so, and I th I'm thinking that I might get into one of those bats next because I just kind of cleared off a practice spin from my wheel. So 
it's ready <laughs> to get into a new project. That segues me into my spinning stuff that I'd like to talk about for a little bit. There's not too much, so I won't, uh, you know, do a deep dive into <laughs> into my spinning. I'm still very much a newbie and like just learning, learning, learning. But my this is what I'm considering my first real spin on my wheel. Um, as you can see, there's some bits that are like completely not spun. It's kind of, you know, it's not the most consistent. It's a little thick and thin in some bits. Um, but I think it's really fun. What I did for this, so the fiber is 100% Rambouillet from Green Goat Ranch. And what I did is bought two braids. One uh, was kind of like a cooler toned purple and blue and like cool toned pinks. And the other was the warmer uh, pinky red kind of color. Um, and spun each braid up as singles and then plied them together. So I think it's kind of, you know, it's kind of funky. I don't know if that's really... Yeah, everything right now is just for learning and <laughs> experimenting. So I'm just rolling with it. So I did that Rambouillet spin before the holidays. Um, did I show that on my last podcast? I don't remember. Anyway, those are finished. I did that before the holidays and then uh, went into knitting mode, obviously while I was traveling and was away from my wheel. So when I got back, I was feeling super excited to kind of get back into spinning and I've been spinning uh, every day since. So it's been a lot of fun. It's, you know, my knitting time has <laughs> decreased as my spinning time has increased, but I have a lot of like spinning goals and projects that I'd like to accomplish this year. And I'm there's still so much to learn that I'm still, you know, trying to just immerse myself. But this last week, I spun this up. Uh, my sister very kindly gifted me one of the mini Malabrigo Nube braids. Um, uh, the colors just came out so pretty. I like keep staring at it. I'm like, oh, it's so cute. So, and it's 100% merino. I can't remember if I said that. I think Malabrigo only, I think they only sell merino fiber for spinning. But um, there's a close up. Yeah, lots of just like muted purples and greens and brown, some pink, some blue. It's so pretty. So. I started spinning this just because it was like little and I was like this might be a nice way to get back into things with the spinning wheel. I've been told that merino can be really tough to spin. I mean similar to Rambouillet, it's a fine wool so um, you've got shorter staple lengths and it's softer, you know not as grippy. Since I'm so new I'm just focusing on consistency and then like once I can get a consistent kind of default yarn down then I will start thinking about trying to adjust and like make specific weights of yarn. <laughs> um, but this I'm so happy with and it came out uh, somewhere around like a heavy DK. I think now that it's been washed, it's probably a worsted weight. And I am going to knit it up into a hat along with this um, Ritual dyes skein. I just think these colors go together so well. And I also think a Harlow hat worsted by Andrea Mowry would just be perfect for these two. So I'm excited. I think this will be the first attempt of knitting with my own hand spun. That is really exciting. Um, and I just can't believe I like made this. 
that concludes my crafting update for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I would love to hear from you in the comments. Um, please like and subscribe if you feel like it. <laughs> I have some plans for this space, so keep your eyes out. I would love to get on a more regular schedule of filming podcasts and posting and maybe even trying other videos that aren't necessarily a podcast video. Um, let me know if there's anything specifically that you'd like to see from me. I would love to do a knit and chat at some point, I think. So if you got any questions, maybe drop those below. And um, if there's enough, then, then I can do a little knit and chat. I'm also working on upping my Instagram game, which I know not everyone is on Instagram or like loves it. There's definitely a uh, love hate with social media in general, but if you are looking for more real time knitting, spinning updates, feel free to follow me there. My username is Madison Montes, same as here on YouTube. Thank you again for watching and I will see you very soon. Happy knitting. Thank you.